Blue Origin may actually launch an uncrewed lander to the surface of the moon this year. We will see. Starship HLS gets all the attention, but the other part of the Artemis program, the other lander, is the Blue Moon Mark II. Here we have some updates about when the Blue Moon Mark I, the smaller version, might actually get to the surface of the moon. This week at the Lunar Surface Innovation Consortium, the Senior Vice President of Lunar Permanence, John Kolaris, gave an update about Blue Moon Mark I. Last year in March, on CBS's 60 Minutes, he gave an interview where he stated that Blue Moon Mark I was expected to fly somewhere from 12 to 16 months from today, today being whenever that was filmed. This lander, we're expecting to land on the moon between 12 and 16 months from today. 12 and 16 months yes. from today. Yes, and I understand I'm saying that publicly, but that's what our team is aiming towards. That was March or maybe even February of 2024. So Blue Origin at that time was aiming for about right now. We're here now in May of 2025. John stated that in about six weeks, they expect the Blue Moon Mark I to ship out. So that brings us into July. And then he said launches a few months after that. So that would bring it to like late 2025. Now in March, NASA held a town hall where they stated that the target date was August of 2025. It sounds like this is a little bit of a slip from that August date. In January of this year, I did predictions for the year and I predicted that there would be no Blue Moon or HLS Starship landing on the surface of the moon this year. Maybe I was too pessimistic with that prediction. Maybe we will see Blue Moon land on the surface of the moon before the year is out. Now with aerospace, you should expect delays. And the major delay here would be New Glenn. That is the availability of Blue Origin's new orbital launch vehicle. The next launch should be, although they haven't announced it, but it, I'd imagine is going to be NASA's Escapade mission, which was supposed to launch in October of last year. That should be the second mission for New Glenn's manifest unless they move things around. So that would mean Blue Moon Mark I would launch on the third New Glenn. Will that happen this year? Hopefully. New Glenn is also booked up with Amazon Kuiper launches. They purchased 12 and they have an option to go up to 15. So that means Amazon's waiting. Amazon needs to launch a bunch of satellites to space before a certain deadline for the FCC. And there's probably pressure on Blue Origin to get New Glenn moving so they can launch those Kuiper satellites. So where does Blue Moon fit in the manifest priority? I don't know, but we don't have a whole lot of information to go on. This vehicle is turned on about three and a half years ago. And we're looking to land this year. The availability of New Glenn is probably going to be what holds up Blue Moon unless they find a problem with Blue Moon before they launch it. John Kolaris did say that they are building two Blue Moon Mark 1s in parallel. This first one is just a test demo. The second one they actually intend to have a payloads on board. As I said, it has day-night capability to land anywhere on the moon, up to three metric tons in an offloading configuration. We're currently building two of these vehicles. We're building intentionally now to get hardware rich. So we have our flight test objectives that were this mission to not be successful, we'll learn from it. We'll learn from the objectives we succeeded in and the ones that we didn't incorporate those into the next vehicle. And that next vehicle we're building on roughly six to eight month cycles on the calendar, assuming no, uh, no lessons learned that we have to go back to. But that's the target that we're looking to. He said they want to launch the next one six to eight months after the first one. Sounds optimistic to me, but maybe within a year. These Blue Moon Mark I missions are uncrewed. They are not meant to have humans on board. But Artemis V is currently envisioned to have astronauts on board Blue Moon Mark II. Now, we expect that Artemis is going to be shaken up with the Trump administration. And I have been saying for a couple years now, if Starship doesn't show great progress, that it's possible that Blue Moon might be shuffled around to be the first lunar lander on the surface of the moon for Artemis III. It's probably not going to be that way, but I can see a future where if something goes terribly wrong with Starship's development and Starship HLS isn't ready yet, then Blue Moon could take its place as the lander for Artemis 3. But for right now, the way that the architecture is envisioned, it's Artemis 5 that Blue Moon is scheduled to launch on. And dates I'm not even going to list because the dates are all wrong. Artemis 4 would be a gateway mission. It wouldn't even be a landing mission, which makes zero sense to me and hopefully makes zero sense to this administration who sounds like they want to cancel the gateway program. It's envisioned to bring 20 tons to the surface of the moon. Just today, the CEO of Blue Origin, David Lamp, put out some images from the testing of astronauts in spacesuits 
in the neutral buoyancy lab at NASA Johnson Space Center, testing out a mock-up of the Mark II lander with the ladder to ensure that astronauts can get actually up that ladder. And here's something new. Blue Origin in that talk earlier this week announced a transporter vehicle. And this was originally envisioned to be a Lockheed Martin vehicle under the national team that was competing for the HLS contract, but that contract changed and now it's a Blue Origin vehicle. This vehicle has evolved uh, significantly since we first won Appendix P. What the transporter does is we launch it on a single New Glenn launch to low Earth orbit and we refuel it using excess propellant from our second stages of New Glenn. So we refuel it in low Earth orbit, and then it continues to NRHO, to a lunar orbit, where it refuels our lander, and then waits uh, for the crew to launch on, on uh, SLS Orion. So they will launch on New Glenn. So again, we're talking about New Glenn being very busy and they need to perhaps ramp up that cadence. It's a seven meter diameter to go along with that tooling that they already have for New Glenn. There's already a prototype that's going through thermal testing and they wanna have a flight unit finished by December. So that really means 2026. Additional notes from John's talk was that he mentioned ISRU, that's in-situ resource utilization, specifically using regulus to create fuel. This has been an idea for decades now and something that NASA was finally putting funding towards a little bit. However, with recent budget proposal cuts, that is likely an area to be cut, unfortunately, unless Congress puts money back into that kind of development. This opens up the solar system. This vehicle, storing liquid hydrogen, can even open up derivative vehicles that can support NTP, other propulsion uh, efforts for the future, for the coming decades. This will open up the solar system. And having the moon as our kind of JFK airport, if you will, as that hub, is what excites all of us in Blue Origin. If we want a sustainable exploration off Earth, then we need to develop the means of creating things in situ, creating things where we are. And that's not gonna happen if we cut the funding to those development programs. Blue Origin has some funding going on internally. They've been doing some studies on Regulate. They have a whole team doing that. So I don't know how much they are actually relying on NASA contracts to do some of these studies on ISRU. Great update, I look forward to hearing more. One thing to note is that Blue Origin has never been a quick company. Of course, they started Started out as an R&D company and recently Jeff Bezos has been wanting Blue Origin to become more of a operational company, more profitable, actually become profitable. And so we might see Blue Origin's culture start to change, but it will take time for the culture to become more, uh, more urgent in the way that they move forward. We have not seen that yet. New Glenn has only launched once back in January of this year. I stayed up till 2 a.m. watching that go a little bit you know, peeking through the clouds, it was a very cloudy night. That was amazing, but they haven't launched since. We can take a look at their existing vehicle, the suborbital New Shepard, to see how frequently they launch. And they've launched three times New Shepard this year. They just announced a fourth launch, of a third crewed launch for the year, NS-32. They've announced that crew, although they have not announced the actual date. Their last launch was April 14th. Prior to that, there were two in February, one crewed, one uncrewed. So it looks like they are picking up the pace, but New Shepard is a well-developed vehicle at this point. And so we don't know what they're going to do with New Glenn, which is still a very new vehicle and how quickly they're going to be able to get Blue Moon Mark I off the ground and onto the moon. If you watched my previous video on the Clips Landers Commercial Lunar Payload Services, I can link that above. You might know that it's really important for us to get actual real data, not just data from satellites that are orbiting the moon, but actual data from descent and landing and roving on the surface of the moon so that we can have better outcomes. We can program the software to be able to more successfully land frequently on the surface of the moon. One of the things that will help with that is a camera that NASA has contracted to put on Blue Origins Blue Moon. And if you want to know more about that system and why it's so important that we get that data, watch this video next.